Right, so now that we've captured features, we can set the symbology for them. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to turn on my geology uh, layer again, and I'm going to turn off my filter. So that was the filter that was excluding all the other tiles uh, surrounding the Ngozi tile. So let's go to that one and turn it off. And that is just under, where is it, under source, query builder, and we can just delete that. Or we can just say clear and OK and OK. And then all the other um, surrounding tiles will be turned on. And then we can think about what we're going to do to to symbolize them. So now if we if we have a look at the attribute table for geology, there are three different fields depending on the period or geological formation. So we've got Cenozoic, Precambrian, and then the intrusion, whether it was granite or, or whatever it was. And we can we can color these all up in one symbology using symbology rules, but a, an easier way to do it might be to actually have three separate layers. So even though we've got one layer referenced or one um, shape file referenced, we can just re-add this as three separate layers. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to color up using these three separate fields for those three separate layers. So we're going to go, I'm going to just say uh, duplicate layer and duplicate layer again. And then I'm just going to rename this one to Cenozoic. rename this one to Precambrian and then the last one will be uh, what was it it was intrusions okay let's start with the Cenozoic so we go properties symbology we're going to use categorized the column we'll use is Cenozoic classify and uh, yours might be slightly different. What I'll do is I'm just going to delete all of those and change the the default symbology quickly so that I can choose a different symbology. So classify. And then this one was like a like a light green. And you can choose any color here. I mean, this is up to you really. The lateritic soils were they were almost like a hatch but they're a dotted hatch, so you could choose a dotted hatch like this one here for lateritic soils. I can also turn off, maybe turn off or, or remove the outline, which is what it looks like on the actual original geographic layers. And then this one too, which was uh, also some kind of hatch. So now this is where you can get creative and uh, add your own hatches if necessary. All right, so that's what mine is going to look like. And then the, the blank category I'm going to turn off. Okay, so there's my Cenozoic layers. And then the Precambrian ones, I'll do the similar sort of thing. Okay, so I'm going to label these ones. So turn it on. Properties, Symbology, Categorized, Precambrian. And I can also change the Symbology for this one, so that just so I can see everything. Okay, I'm just going to run with those defaults. And this is, yeah, you may take some time and then add all these uh, or add your specific color or customize it to whatever you need and then what you can do is you go and you just save the layer style so uh, yes it's under style you would save the style so that you can then apply these to other geological tiles so you don't have to change and customize the color for each of these categories every time you do it you just do it once and then you save it okay so I'm going to run with those so it looks something like that that um, I'm just going to change one color here because that that big blue one is is quite offensive to the eyes. Maybe something something like that. <laughs> right, so we've got our Precambrian done, and then the intrusions. Now the intrusions, I'm going to stick on top of the Precambrian, and those were the the geological, just things like granite and that sort of thing. So granite intrusions, okay. So we'll just go like this again and classify. We need to choose the column to classify on intrusion, classify. And this is where it, you know if you, if it gets a bit confusing if you if you don't go and customize your own layers, this is where maybe an issue. Maybe I'll make these all black or like a dark purple just for the, for the sake of this uh, this example. Something like that. So now we'll definitely know which ones are intrusions. Ah, you see, now we've got we've got two layers here. So we've got 
an intrusion sitting over the top of a Precambrian layer. So for this specific uh, example, we're going to need to make the intrusions slightly transparent uh, by, choosing a s uh, by choosing a stipple. So which one is this? I'm just going to use my little information tool, identify tool, and click on that one, and it's granite intrusion. So, so maybe that's the, the right thing to do, is choose a stipple for, or some sort of hatch for your intrusions. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to see the Precambrian formation underneath it. So let's show you an example by using the granite intrusion. So I'm going to open that one, granite intrusion, and we're going to go and choose a different fill. So I'm going to choose the SVG fill, and then I think the actually on the on the original um, geological maps, it's like a little plus. It's like a green plus. So let's choose that one and see see if we can get it similar to that green plus that comes out there and then possibly just change the size down to 8 or something like that maybe even less 6 okay and then we can let's can we delete that line or remove the outline this actually works okay let's see what this looks like so we say okay and apply and okay and there we go so now what you can see is you can see that the formation the precambrian formation is md whichever one that is, MD down here, which MD is the rule, is it the Megindo, Megindo formation for Burundian Megindo formation, and then the granite intrusions are these green pluses. So you could make those a bit smaller if that's if that's sort of um, dominating the view there. Uh, what else? There's granite here, and I think with the granites, it might be a case where you can use a solid fill because there aren't any uh, Precambrian formations under it. So if I just say OK and see what that looks like. I turn that off. I'll turn this off. Yeah, you can see that there actually aren't any Precambrian formations underneath that one. So in, in that example, those two fields in the attribute table each only have one value, whereas with this formation here for, for MD and then the granite intrusions, the each of the formations will each have one value. That's why they are overlapping. And then you can also see the lateritic soils is the same case. I'll just click on what some of these lateritic soils to show you what I mean. So just click on this one here. You can see that the Precambrian value is NG, the lateritic soil. So in that case, there are once again two formations on top of each other. And by choosing the stipple, we can see the formation for the Precambrian era. OK, but I'd expect you to, to take more time and, and sort of figure out how to, to to set the different symbologies for each of those formations. Then the geological points, that's more straightforward because there's no overlapping is not an issue. And so far, I just captured a bunch of extra ones and there are only there are only two different types here. So I'll just go geological points and I'll color up according to the type field classifier. Remove that one. And you can choose anything here, litage. Uh, I think we'll look at uh, SVG markers as well. And you can go ahead and choose any formation or any any uh, symbol here. Let's choose this one. And we'll make it dark so we can see it. So I just need to pan up slightly. Uh, let's just make it dark. OK, there we go. There's that one. And then for the site with uh, prehistoric importance, might be nice to choose uh, a little SVG marker that's a bit more relevant. Historic importance. Maybe this little eye. That's that's not a bad one. Change the size slightly so it's so it's more prominent. Three maybe, and then also dark. Otherwise, it's not going to show up on top of the the layers. And then going back to that, you're going to need to make sure that your your points are on top, then your lines, then your polygons. Otherwise, your points will be obscured by your polygons. And then, let's see, we'll zoom to the extent of those. Here they are down here. Okay, but there are a bunch more. And uh, you can add and symbolize those as you capture them. Okay, then, um, for the last one, geological lines. So similarly for the geological lines, we can color up on type. So I'm going to go to symbology, categorized, choose the column, which is type, classify. 
and now these were a bunch of different ones so we have got the fault was just a straight up black line or something like that the extension faults where the exti where the existence is is unknown was a more of a stippled line something like this so what we could do is just change this spacing oh so let's try that again i'm going to choose a different line so we can maybe choose solid line dash line so it's it's similar to the dark line except it's just got a dash we'll say okay so we've got one dashed one solid and then this one was slightly different uh, the geological limit was just a dark line that was was very thin or much thinner so maybe we'll make that 0 0.3 let's say and then it's also dark and you don't have to stick to these you don't even have to copy the the original geological map you can just choose the layers that are best suited to viewing them uh, for your purposes. So the last one might be something like this. I think I'm going to choose this topo road and then I'll change that top one to dashed. Try this dash. Something like that. And just hit apply and OK. There we go. That kind of tells the story. And there we've got our polygons, our faults, lines, and points all selected uh, and symbolized. Okay, so that's that. So now we've got uh, we've got our, our layers captured, and we've got them symbolized. And the next step is up to you to just to just go forward and start digitizing layers. Now, if you do come across um, certain issues with capturing stuff um, just give me a shot and I, I can step you through any processes or editing processes but that is the basics and that's how you're going to go about capturing your geological features good luck and give me a shot if you have any issues cheers